Hi, I'm Andrew Kirch, a community manager at Xenos. I'm creating a series of short videos to quickly cover tasks encountered during the initial learning curve running Xenos 4. In this video, I'm going to add devices to Xenos. You can read more about this subject by visiting the Xenos wiki at wiki.xenos.org. While you're there, add yourself to our user map. In this video, we will add a Cisco Catalyst 2950 24-port switch running Cisco's iOS and a fresh CentOS 6.3 install. We will also look at a Microtik RB2011 and an Ubuntu 12.10 64-box that are already being monitored. To add a device to Xenos, first go to the Infrastructure tab. When you get to the infrastructure tab, you'll see on the left a device tree. This tree is hierarchical. We'll start by adding the Cisco switch. So that's a network device. We go to network and switch. Click here to add a single device. Give it the IP address. A title. Let's call this Cisco 2950 lab switch. And just so that I don't have to go back and fix it if I haven't set it, we can tell the SNMP community. Now remember, this is inherited. You generally don't have to set this, but for the purpose of this video, I'm setting all these just so you can see where they're done if you needed to set up a device-specific SNMP. So we'll go ahead and add that device, and this is about a 15 to 20 second process. You'll see down at the bottom that a new job started, and there's a job monitor there. And if we click on the job monitor, we can see that it was started seven seconds ago. We can also see a history of other jobs that have been run. This one takes about 15 to 20 seconds, so it should be over here now. So we go to the Cisco 2950 lab switch, and let's see what we found. It's a 24-port switch, and as with any Cisco switch, you'll have a null and a VLAN interface. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we get per interface. On each interface, we get three graphs. Throughput, packets, and errors. And that's the same for every interface. The only other thing of interest that we're going to see with this switch is the VLAN interface has an IP address associated with it. And Xenos does pick those up. So you can go find the IP address for this device very easily. As I said, we only need to set the community string in the uh, add dialog box because the rest of the information will actually automatically propagate itself. This is a switch, it's running iOS 12.1. Um, here's the SNMP system name. And here's the rest of the description of the operating system and how we're pulling it. It's uh, SNMP V2C, V2C. So let's go look at another router. Go back to network switch. Guess we could have gone back to devices, but it doesn't matter. Microtik. This is the Microtik RB2011. We do get a little bit more data from this guy. Uh, if we look under here, you can see network routes because this is a router. Uh, you've got three interfaces that are being monitored. Uh, the file system on the, on the router is being monitored. And you have graphs of CPU and memory utilization as well as some other parameters you might care about on a router. So let's go back and add a Linux device. There's two ways to monitor Linux devices. If you go under your servers tab, we can see both. We'll start by just monitoring as an SNMP Linux device. So we do add a single device. And again, we type in the IP. Title, we'll call this CentOS 64 lab box. More SNMP community. Again, I shouldn't have to fill this in, but I'm filling it in just to show you where, to, where you'll find it. And hit Add. And again, we'll see a job running. This one will take a little bit longer because it's running SNMP. And we'll wait for this guy to finish. Again, about 20 to 25 seconds. What this is doing is it's pinging the device and then running an SNMP walk on it. There, there are various modeling plugins that Xenos will use to kind of determine what's in a device. And we got an error. Let's see why. SNMP agent down. Okay, that's easy enough. 
Uh, this is something you will get with CentOS boxes. I actually deliberately threw this er error. Um, you can enable SNMP in your firewall, but just quickly, we can flush the firewall for testing purposes. Don't leave your firewall down like this, and especially since it, when it reboots, it'll come back anyway. Uh, we can go back into the device and remodel it. And this time we should see configuration changed if the modeling worked. And you can already see that it is processing information via SNMP for the device. And this is the line we're looking for. Zen modeler changes in configuration applied. That means that it saw something new. So let's go back to the device. And in a second here, it will refresh. And you've got 13 IP services running on the box, two network routes three file systems, and this will start to propagate with data as time goes on. Uh, one processor, this thing's running in VirtualBox, uh, obviously right down in the taskbar there, and two network interfaces. So we, we, we've uh, graphed out the entire system, and like the MicroTik, it's also got load, CPU, memory, and I.O. utilization. Let's look at one of these devices that's been fully propagated, and then I'll show you a different way to monitor that box that might get you a little bit more information. As we go down to server again, actually I can just quickly click over on it over here. Uh, Marlow is another box that I run a lot of virtual box on. It's almost a cloud. I mean, it's not fully set up, but uh, it's a laptop that sits in another room closed with a whole lot of virtual machines running on it. So we've got all the monitoring here. Let's take a look at uh, graphing and performance. We've got file systems here that we're monitoring uh, and it will, it will watch, um, and again, you've got that high disk threshold. Um, four processors in this box. It's a Core i7. Uh, three network interfaces, wired and wireless. It'll, uh, I've got it hooked up to a, just a gigabit router, so it's not going to propagate the wireless interface. Um, use standard network routes. Uh, of course, with Ubuntu, they always try the zero knowledge stuff that gives you a 169 address and the IP services on the box, which are actually fairly minimal. Let's show you how to move the box that we just created to SSH monitoring. It's actually very simple. So we go under Linux, we got the CentOS 64 lab box. So we want to move it to SSH monitoring. It is actually just as simple as drag and drop. It'll tell you, do you want to move this one device to Linux? Yes. Okay. Now there's one more thing you want to do with a device when you add it. Uh, you'll remember on the dashboard, and we'll go back to that in a moment, there's a map. You can take that CentOS lab box and tell the device that it's in Indianapolis, um, which is where I'm located. Uh, and that allows you to see at a glance under the dashboard what's up and what's down. Green will turn to red if there's a problem and will help you visualize a network that's you know covers more than one city that covers adding devices